The Learning Journey in association with Turn It Up Tuesday hosted by Ross Audio presents Did You Know? This week we'll examine emancipation and the apprenticeship period in Jamaica. Let us set the context. We must understand that while the slave trade was abolished in 1807, the Abolition Act for Slavery was passed in 1833, emancipating all slaves in the British West Indies. The Act went into force on August 1, 1834. However, it should be noted that while on paper slaves were free, the enslavers had found another way to get labor by the apprenticeship period. This was a period that lasted between 1834 and 1838. A letter written by the governor of Jamaica was published in 1835 and it gives us an account from the enslavers perspective of what this period entailed. The letter states, you will on the 1st of August no longer be slaves, but from that day you will be apprenticed to your former owners for a few years in order to be fit for freedom. How ridiculous this is. Our ancestors needed no form of training to be free. They already knew what freedom was. Of course, that's why some of them ran away into the hills. They were already free people when they came to the Caribbean and if they were born into bondage, they would have had their oral traditions to guide them to the new pathway of not being enslaved. The letter goes on to say, it will therefore depend entirely on your own conduct, whether your apprenticeship is long or short. For if you run away, you will be brought back by the maroons and the police and have to remain in apprenticeship longer than those who are behaved. Seriously, the length of our ancestors' apprenticeship period was now down to good or bad behavior via the enslaver's perspective? To make matters worse, if you try to escape, the maroons and the police would come for you. Bad boys or bad girls, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when the maroons and police come for you? The maroons. Please note that the maroons were also positioned as enforcers, not only during the time of slavery, but after slaves got their freedom in the time of the apprenticeship period. The governor goes on by saying, you'll be required to work for four days and a half each week. The remaining day and a half in each week will be your own time and you may employ to your own benefit. Bear in mind that everyone is obliged to work. Some will work with their hands, others will work with their heads, but no one can live and be considered respectable without employment. This again seems like slavery. These working conditions are not that of a free person. And that's why we have so many historians saying that this period was an extension of slavery. I wanted to stop reading the letter, but in good conscience, I couldn't. I had to give you more. So let me continue. The letter goes on and it states, I pray therefore do your part faithfully. For if you neglect your duty, you will be brought before magistrates whom the king has sent out to watch you. And they must act duly and do justice to all by punishing those who are badly disposed. The document ends by saying, your friend and well-wisher, Sligo governor of Jamaica. Well-wisher? I don't need a well-wisher like this one. The reality is that the letter ends with a threat. If it were the intentions to get a slave fit for freedom, why slaves had to conform to the evils associated with this apprenticeship period? In reality, it was never the intention of the enslavers to empower ex-slaves to have opportunities and to get a better start as they move towards freedom. Rather, it was the intention to exploit. And the reality is that the punishment was no promise. It was the reality. During this time, ex-slaves were raped, beaten, tied up, flogged, and at times forced to dance and commit other inhumane acts. Yes, this was a level of hypocrisy that went on during this period of time. Slaves who should have been freed were brutalized. When I went to high school in Jamaica, the curriculum back then presented the apprenticeship period as a necessity for ex-slaves to make their transition into freedom. This is far from the truth. The reality is it was intended to benefit the planters. Yes, the planters. By the middle of the 19th century, only years after emancipation, 
the Caribbean economies began failing due to the falling prices in sugar. And planters in the region, such as Jamaica, saw their plantations close. As I end, I want to restate that slave owners received compensation while those who were enslaved were never given compensation. As Professor Hilary Bettles puts it, the British Caribbean authorities neglected human development for the black populations in the Caribbean. As one writer puts it, the colonial legislation created a racial and colonial inequality that continues across the Caribbean even to this day. Regardless of these limitations, I must say that emancipation created a population of independent people with skills, craftsmanship, and the ability to put the Caribbean on top. Until next week, please join us for another Did You Know on Turn It Up Tuesday hosted by Rossi. Over to you, Rossi.